everyone, welcome back to my channel, my name is Anna, and today we'll be doing my August book releases. Let's get going. Now, so there's quite a lot of books coming in in August, I feel like it's mostly Thriller that's coming out, or maybe just me, I, but um, yeah, there's some really good books coming out in August, so let's get going. So my first book is My Salty Mary by Cynthia Henn, and Bernie Ashton and Jody Meadows. This is like the third book in the My Contrary Mary trilogy, which I loved. I didn't really quite like the second book, but hopefully maybe this book will be good. Uh, but this is like where the Princess Bride and a Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Venture, which I have read, and it was pretty good, so yeah. And this is where we're following like a piratical historical fantasy remix that marries the story of the Little Mermaid with the life and times of infamous lady pirate Mary Reed. Don't call this Mary Little, call her Captain, unless you want to walk the plank. Mary is in love with the so-called Prince of Charles Town, except he doesn't love her back, which is inconvenient since she is a mermaid, but being broken hearted means she will poof <laughs> turn into sea foam. The summary is so silly. <laughs> but instead Mary finds herself pulled out of the sea and up onto a pirate ship. To survive, she joins them, but Mary isn't willing to just sing the yo ho hoes. She wants a pirate life, all of it, and she's ready to make a splash by becoming captain. But when Blackbeard dies suddenly, Mary has a chance to be so much more. Pirate king. Or queen. She won't let anyone stop her, not Blackbeard's cute son, not her best friend from back under the sea, who is having a bit too much fun with his new legs, and certainly not anyone who says she can't be a pirate just because she's a girl. She may not be the best man for the job, but she will definitely prove that she is worth her salt. So the, I feel like there's always like the superstitious I mean, with the pirates that it's a bad girl to bring in, it's bad luck to bring a girl on a ship. And it's just silly. <laughs> but it comes out on August 20th. My next book is Drown Me With Dreams by Gabby Burton. This is number two. And Sing Me To Sleep. Simon sees Silicon Blaze on the run, accused of several murders that Simon and Entity promised, even a newly crowned King Hayes, can't protect her if she's caught. The only way to save her life is to send her on a dangerous mission across the magical barrier that surrounds the kingdom. Forced to travel in Gaelic, once her best friend, now her greatest betrayer, she begins to unravel multiple plots that threaten the safety of her family, the livelihood of the entire kingdom, and her future with Hayes. And the more time she spends with Gaelic, the harder it is to keep hating him. Soon Sayoz is forced to one of Hayes is in the right ruler for the kingdom. And what if he's not? Is she willingly to betray her king and her heart? It comes out on August 20th. My next book is The Crimson Crown by Hannah Walter. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most villainous of them all? Snow White's Dark Queen tells her side of the story. Legends tell of a witch who became a queen. The heartless villain in the story of Snow White. But how do, now the wicked queen is stepping out of Snow White's shadow to become the heroine of her own legend. Her real once upon a time begins when she is just Alice, a young witch who lives in the forest with her coven. The witch practices their magic in secret hiding from the white king and is built a wall against witchcraft. Amply have our faces a wall of her own. Her magical gifts have yet to reveal themselves and as the threat of the royal Huntsman intensifies, Alif fears she will never become the witch her common needs. To prove herself, Alif sets out a perilous quest that sends her to the White Palace and the sun the condemned world of drama and disease. And there, Alif encounters an unlikely figure from her Jagratta, a witch who once held Alif's heart and betrayed her. As events of the palace escalate, Alif finds herself caught in the web of the White King whose dark charisma is as dangerous as the sinister force that seems to be haunting the palace, and perhaps even Alith herself. With the threat of discovering and living, Alith and Jagrita must turn aside the wilds of the past and work together to survive. It comes out on August 27th. As she uncovers the secrets of the court, right court, and those of her own heart, Alith must find the strength to transform into someone she never imagined she could be. A powerful witch, the very wickedest of them all. And perhaps that is her power. It comes out on August 27th. My next book, as I have talked a little bit about numerous times, is Lady Macbeth by Avril Reed. The lady knows the stories, how her eyes induce madness in men. 
the lady knows she'll be wet in a Scottish boot who does not leave his mommy away behind when he comes to the marriage bed. The lady knows his hostile suspicious quote will be a game of strategy, requiring all of her wives and requiring all of her wills and hidden witchcraft to survive. But the lady does not know her husband has oculate secrets of his own. She does not know the prophecy grants him like armor. She does not know that her magic is greater and more dangerous and devil threatened to order of the world. She does not know this yet, but she will. She doesn't know a lot of things. I'm, t I'm just kidding. It comes out on August 6th. My next book is Kind Baima by Talia Herbert. And so far we have just a new series of contemporary Austin inspired rom-coms for the brilliant and that's all it says. It will come out on August 15. My next book is Girls Who Burn by M.K. Pagano. And the summer of before her senior year, Annie told the worst words she could think of at her sister. And hours later, Fiona was found dead at the bottom of a ravine. The police ruled her death an accident, but Annie has never bought it. Her ballet progeny sister didn't slip and fall. She was pushed. Annie's number one suspect, Thatcher Montgomery. The rich boy down the street who always had a thing for Fiona. No one believes her. At least of what Thatcher's cousin Seth and Annie's childhood rival, and the boy she always loved to hate. Arguing with Seth is easy. Living with her own questionable choices and more Seth the night Fiona died, much harder. And that's why you should always be careful with your words. And I've already talked about this book numerous times, and that is Amy, Guardian of Dawn by S.J. Jones. When a pillar blooms, the end of the world is not far behind. Lee Amy was always on the outside, outside of family, outside of friendships, outside of ordinary magic. The odd and eccentric daughter of a former Imperial magician has she has devoted her life to books because she finds them easier to read than people. Exiled to the outermost west of the morning robes, Amy has become the sole caretaker of a mentally ill father whose writings and ravings may be more than mere ramblings. They may be part of a dire prophecy. When her father is arrested for trespassing and stealing a branch from the sacred tree of the local monastery, Amy offers herself to the mysterious beast in the castle, who is in need of someone who can translate and prepare the magical text and find a cure for the mysterious blight that is affecting the harvest of the land. So it is a meeting in the beast we tell, and it will come out on August 6th. My next book is The Girl with No Reflections by Akish Chow. Clintus Yin Yu believed in love once upon a time. Yet when she is chosen to win the crown, Prince Ying's dreams of a fairy tale marriage quickly fell apart. Her husband-to-be is cold and indifferent, confiding Ying to her room for reasons he won't explain. Worse still are the rumors that swirl around the pillar whispers of seven other royal brides, who after their own weddings mysteriously disappeared. Left alone with only her own reflection to him for company, Ying begins to see things, strange things. Movements in the corners of her mirror, colorful lights upon its surface, and when on the eve of her wedding, she unwittingly tears open the gateway. She is pulled into a mirror world. And this realm is full of sediment reflections, including the enigmatic mirror prince. Unlike his real world counterpart, the mirror prince is kind and compassionate, and before long, Yang falls in love and the kind of love she's always dreamed of. But there is darkness in this world, too. It comes out on August 6th. And also, I also talked this book up quite a bit. It is The Desi Heist by Caitlin Schneiderhan. Welcome to France 1517, a world of intrigue, opulence, secrets, and murder. The Medici family rules the city from the seat of wealth, but the people of Florence remember the few decades they spent as a republic free from the Medici's and the puppet Pope Emilio X. Shop went in 17 year old con. Woman Rosa Salini has plans for the Pope and the Medicis, and more specifically the Mountain of Aldogen's money they have been extorting from the people of Tuscany. To pull off the Renaissance's greatest robbery, she will recreate a team of capable Zara the Tinkerer, Calha the Fighter, and Giacomo, the irrepressible master of disguise. Rosa to top it all off and to smooth the entrance into the fortress like Palazzo, Medici was an even a less than reluctant help of famed artist and local misanthrope, Michelangelo, comes out on August 6th. Again, I also talked about this book, and it's The Gentle Minds of Celeste Artois 
by Ryan Grondin. Once I left, I had had dreams of being an artist, but when the creative light of Paris dashed those plans, she turned her talents to forgery and cons. She and the judge is she and the enchantresses, her two fellow thieves and best friends, see Paris as a rich hunting grounds for marks. Yet even though the hideout in Paris, La Chaise Cemetery, is bursting with flanks, and Celeste cannot rest, there is always more to take, and the blood she has begun to cough into her handkerchief means her time is running out. And this book will come out on August 27th. My next book is The Sign of Lies by Lauren Lane Brown. When a young woman is found dead, on her college campus, her sister doesn't believe it was an accident, and her search for her answers leads her closer to home than she ever would have imagined. Maya can't wait to return to Princeton, Princeton for reunions. It's been a decade since she graduated, but she's looking forward to seeing old faces and reminiscing about her college days. And this year is even more special because her little sister Naomi is graduating. But what should have been a dream weekend becomes Maya's worst nightmare when she gets a call no one ever wants. Naomi is dead. The police are saying it's an accident, but Maya expects there is more to the story than they are learning on. It comes out on August 13. My next book is The Seventh Wheel of Salome by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. She is also the author of God's Gods of Jane and Shadow and Mexican Gothic. 1950s Hollywood. Every actress wants to play Salome, the star making role in a big budget movie about the legendary woman whose story has inspired artists since ancient times. And so, when the film's Mercula director cast Vera Laros, an unknown Mexican Indian, in the lead role, she quickly becomes the talk of the town. Vera also becomes an object of envy for Nancy Hartley. A big player whose career has stalled and who will do anything to win the fame she believes she richly deserves. Two actresses both determined to make it to the top in Golden Age Hollywood, a city overflowing with gossip, scandal, and intrigue, and fakeness, if I'm being honest, <laughs> make for a sizzling combination. But this is a tale of three women, for it is also the story of the Princess Salome herself. Consumed with desire for the fiery prophet who foretells the doom of her stepfather, Henard, a woman torn between the decree of duty and the yearning of her heart. Before the curtain comes down, there will be tears and tragedy at plenty. And it comes out on August 6th. A lot of books are coming out on August 6th. My next book is The Dark We Know by Wen Yi Li. Our student is a daughter Chang, sworn never to return to Slater. Growing up, Inza never felt at ease in the repressive form of writing town, even before she realized she was bisexual. But after the deaths of two of her childhood friends, Slater went from feeling claustrophobic to suffocating. Aizen took off before the town could swallow her too, even though it meant leaving behind everything she knew, including her last surviving friend, Mason. When Aizen's unused father kicks the bucket, she agrees to come back just long enough to collect an inheritance, but then Mason, son of the local medium, turns up at the cemetery with a revelation and a plea. The friends were murdered by a supernatural entity, and he needs Aizen to help stop the evil before it takes anyone else. Comes out on August 13. What are the odds? <laughs> you know, 13, bad luck number, and we have a ghost story. <laughs> My next book is The Instrumentalist by Harriet Constable. Venice, 1704. Eight year old Anna Maria is just one of the 300 girls growing up within the Pieta's walls, but she already knows she is different. Obsessive and gifted, she is on a mission to become Venice's greatest violinist and composer and her remarkable world of color and sound, it seems like nothing will stop her. But the odds are stacked against an orphan girl. So when the maestro selects her as a star pupil, Anna Maria knows she must do everything in her power to please this difficult, brilliant man. But as Anna Maria's star rises, threatening to eclipse that of her mentor, the dream she has so singularly minorly pursued is thrown into pearl. And that comes out on August 15. And my last book is Mistress of Lies by N. K. M. Enway. Fate is a cruel mistress. The, the daughter of a powerful but disgraced blood walker, Shannon LeClaire, has spent her entire life perfecting her blood magic, building her new network of spies and gathering every scrap of power she could. 
Now to protect her brother, she assassinates the father and takes her place at the head of the family. And that is only the start of her revenge. Samuel Hutchinson is a bastard and with a terrible gift. When he stumbles upon the first victim of a magical serial killer, he is drawn into the world of magic and intrigue he has worked so hard to avoid. And he is pulled deeply into the ravenous and bloodthirsty court of the Vampire King. Comes out on August 13. And not all the box in what's coming out August book releases. Of course, there will be more coming out. These are just the books that I want to read. And hopefully we will get through them. So a lot of them really do sound good. But um, yeah, let me know what you're excited for August. And please like, comment, subscribe. So you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!